Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be doing another blind taste test rankings video. Now, the way these videos work, for anybody that's not seen one of our previous blind taste test rankings videos, is we have five cups of coffee over here, we have five bags of coffee over here, we're trying to identify which of these cups is which of these bags based off of taste alone. Then we're going to be ranking them in order of our favorite to our least favorite. And there's a theme behind each and every one of these videos. And the theme behind this video is checking out Wes and Gopi, which is a coffee roaster based out of Shah Alam, Malaysia. Now Wes and Gopi is a coffee roaster that has appeared on this channel one time before when we reviewed the Finca Isabel, a wash processed Bolivian Gesha. And while I did enjoy that coffee, the inspiration for this video was when we received a sample of the Ngise Gameta from Airworks Coffee, which was a natural processed Ethiopian coffee from Wes and Gopi. And I enjoyed it so much that it currently remains my favorite natural processed coffee that I've tried this entire year, and one of my favorite coffees that I've tried for the entirety of the year as well. Couple that with the fact that Wes and Gopi is offering some pretty interesting coffees on their website currently, so let's go ahead and introduce the coffees that will be featured in this video. Beginning with the Finca Ortiz 1900 Tipica Mejorado, which is a yellow honey processed Costa Rican coffee. And that one is pretty interesting because it's the first time I've ever seen a Costa Rican Mejorado coffee. But moving on, we have the Benchmaji Lucy Station, a wash processed Ethiopian Gesha. Then we have the Halo Hartume Beer Hanu Dido, the natural underscreen processed Ethiopian coffee. The La Marquesa by Chimena Leon, an anaerobic wash processed Ecuadorian coffee. And then last, the Hacienda Esmeralda Land Race Association Wash Processed Panama. And that one is also pretty interesting as it is an Ethiopian land race variety that is of course grown at the Hacienda La Esmeralda estate. So that is also a pretty interesting coffee and I'm very curious about that one as well. But for now, let's go ahead and move these out of the way to give us some more space. And as always, none of these cups are labeled anywhere except for on the bottom. We just like to shuffle them around for good measure as it gives us an opportunity to discuss what we have in our hands here today. And we do have a nice mix of processing on this one as we have an anaerobic wash processed coffee, two wash processed coffees, the one natural of course, and then the yellow honey processed uh, Costa Rican coffee, which will make for a pretty interesting review for a number of reasons. The first of which being that the Ethiopian and the Panamanian coffee could get flip-flopped given that I fully expect them to offer very similar characteristics with both of them being the wash processed coffees on this table. And then the Costa Rican coffee and then the Ecuadorian coffee might be a little tricky as well because the Costa Rican coffee is a Mejorado. So I fully expect it to have a lot of Ecuadorian characteristics given that the vast majority of Ecuadorian coffees we reviewed this year have been Mejorados of course. And then the processing methods also might be a little tricky given that neither of them are overly processed, but they're definitely a little bit more processed than our wash processed coffees. So that in itself should also be a little interesting. And then I fully expect the natural process to be the favorite going into this, mostly because of the experience we had with that in Gisa Gameta. But let's go ahead and move these for right here for right now. And we will start with this one right here, cup number one. And as I mentioned, I do think it's going to be a little tricky to kind of discern which of these coffees is, of course, that non-natural. And that's the example right here. It's this one is very sweet and clean, so it could be any of the other four coffees. But it's got some really nice sweetness to it. And I don't necessarily have a good guess based off of this first try, but it is definitely a pretty nice coffee. We're off to a very good start. I'm going to place this one in first place for right now. Let's go ahead and move on to cup number two. And this one slightly more tame relative to the first one as I felt like the first one had some excellent sweetness while this one isn't offering quite as much sweetness. Still a very clean coffee and once again that's going to make things very tricky given that these coffees I fully expect all of them to be very clean. Even the natural I expect to be pretty clean for a natural processed coffee so I'm going to place it in second place for right now. I don't really have a good gauge on what either of these two coffees are for the moment but let's go ahead and move on to cup number three. This one's pretty interesting too. This one also has some really nice sweetness and intensity. I'm gonna place this one in second for right now. 
It's also pretty clean and I'm not entirely sure what this one could be as of this moment, but I do have a slight bit of a guess. I think because of the intensity, it might not necessarily be just one of our wash processed coffees, but I'm not overly confident on that. All right, let's move on to cup number four. And this one is our natural. I am 100% confident on that, and it is reminiscent of that Ngise Gameda in the sense that it's very clean and very fruit forward. This one has some absolutely wonderful blueberry-like tones to it. I'm immediately putting this one in first place. That is a very impressive coffee, and I have a hard time believing that any of these other coffees are going to come anywhere close to that one right there. That is an absolute standout. All right, final cup, cup number five. This one is actually very nice. So this one is offering some tremendous clarity to it. And for that reason, I think that it's going to be one of our other wash processed coffees on this table. I'm willing to move this one up to second place for right now, which means I'm gonna move all of these down for the moment. And I'm pretty confident on the first one, and I don't think that anything is going to displace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that guess right now. I'm going to say that it is the natural processed Ethiopian coffee, the Halo Hartume. So that one right there. And then here's where things get tricky with the rest of them. So let's go ahead and run through them one more time real quick. That is an absolutely wonderful coffee, just such high clarity to it. And I think that the only thing that can really have that clarity is probably going to be our Gesha. Of course, it could be the Panama as well. And as I'm taking this coffee in this time around, it's not quite as impressive as the first try. And I think it's mostly because some of the other coffees are standing out a little bit more than this one. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to see if I wanna keep it in that spot. I'm still confident that this one right here isn't necessarily one of our wash processed coffees. I think it just has a little bit more intensity to it. This one right here is coming out the most tame. So I'm confident, I'm actually not confident on any of them, but I said initially that I think because of the clarity, this one right here is going to be the Gesha. So let's take a guess on that. It's the Benchmaji Lucy Station, All right? And then this one right here, I'm still gonna give it one more try. These are all very clean coffees. Oof. I'm going to take a gamble and say that mostly because just from preference, Going to be the Panama. And then I'm gonna say we have the Costa Rica last, and then the anaerobic wash processed Ecuadorian coffee. All right, I'm only confident on one of these, so let's see how we did. This one right here I said was our honey processed Costa Rican coffee, so it should say HC for Honey Costa Rica. And it is. It's off to a good start. It's interesting how tame it is, and I can tell that it's not quite as clean as these two, and it's obviously not the natural, so that's kind of the only giveaway I had for it. I think because this one is offering a little bit more of some Sidra-like characteristics, that's what kind of differentiated between these two for me. But of course, these are our non-natural and our non wash processed coffees, so the kind of mix of processing in these two. But we'll see if we got this one right, as I felt like this one was the other non-washed coffee on this table, so it should say a uh, AE for anaerobic Ecuador, and it is. Okay, two for two as of this moment. I kind of explained my reasoning for that one right there, but this is a pretty good start as I'm a little bit more confident on the rest, starting with this one right here, as this one I imagine then is going to be our wash processed Panamanian coffee, and it is. And I think this one's going to perform better isolated on its own, mostly because of how positive of an experience I had with this coffee trying it on its own for the first time. After trying it, maybe alongside some of the other coffees, it wasn't quite as impressive the second time around, but I still think that there's some tremendous potential within that coffee. 
All right, now I'm 100% confident on the rest. So this one right here should be the wash processed Ethiopian. So it should say W-E. And it does. All right, error right there. But yeah, as I kind of mentioned, that one has just some absolutely wonderful clarity to it. And outside of that, just some really nice intensity, some wonderful fruit forward aspects to it as well. So that one is one that I'm gonna keep an eye out for. I think it could be one of my favorite wash processed coffees we've had this entire year. And last, of course, we have the natural processed Ethiopia. So it should say NE and it does. And that one has potential to be one of my favorite coffees of the entire year. This was a very impressive selection of coffees, and I'm extremely excited to try all of them on their own because I think all of them have such tremendous potential. Even these two, I would say that these two would perform extremely well in maybe some other blind taste test videos where they're not up against some real powerhouses as these other coffees were just really impressive in this video as well. But five for five, I will happily take this one as I felt like these two were tricky and I felt like these two were tricky, so I'm happy happy that I was able to get those all correct. And I'm just happy that I was able to do well in this in general. But these coffees, I'm very much looking forward to reviewing. We will have full reviews for all these coffees coming up in the future, a full West and Gopi series, as there are coffee roaster that I certainly want to highlight here in the near future. So I'm going to leave this video at that. As I always say, if you guys enjoy these blind taste test videos, they take the most amount of time to do, but they are easily the most fun. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a blind taste test featuring five coffees from Wes and Gopi. Thank you for watching.